Tears of the Kingdom and Angry Birds. What do they have in common? Well, nothing really. I guess the older Zeldas have slingshots. Good enough for me. Let's build the cast of Angry Birds and side of Tears of the Kingdom. Since we can't enlist the Rito for our crew, that leaves our trusty friends the Korok. While they aren't natural-born avians, a little bit of magic can grant them some temporary wings. And for that magic, I present the Korokapult. While not quite the Angry Bird slingshot, it does a pretty good job of giving that same feel when launching a bird to crash a camp. It's basically just a wing stabilizer and some springs, but that's besides the point. Let's build some birds. Bird 1, the classic that started it all, Red. As he's got no special power, as we could slot our Korok on the launcher without modification. While Red could probably break a board or two, our little Korok can't, but launching him does make a fun way to complete the carry quest. The blues are a bit more difficult, as we can't really split a Korok. There are a lot of these carry quest Koroks, though, and the game doesn't stop us from grabbing three separate ones and bringing them together. By putting an item in the center of all three, we can make a, well, really mangled blues. I used a choo-choo jelly here to help get the functionality we had from actual Angry Birds. See, you could tap the screen and split them, and I figured if I launched them and then shot the jelly, they'd split apart, giving us essentially the blues. Though, uh, they don't quite deal much damage either, just like the real blues. BOOM! Stick a bomb on a Korok and you got Mr. Bomb. I thought maybe I'd try raining one down at a camp, but yeah, that blast radius isn't so good. Maybe we should try to take down a Hedox instead. Now we just launch and... yeah, that's pitiful damage. In fact, I did this a bunch, but it was so inefficient that the weather took the Hinox out with lightning before I could deal enough. Matilda! I thought I'd take a similar route to the Blues and break a choo-choo holding both the egg and Matilda together to separate them. Though in Angry Birds, when you use Matilda, the egg does some real damage, while the egg in Tears of the Kingdom is, well, underwhelming. So personally, I like this revision better. Canon makes it feel more like the original, even if the trajectory is a bit more unconventional. On to Terrence, and what better way to represent him than by using one of the hefty blocks that drop from the sky. So we just launch him, and... Huh, that's strange. I tried this a bunch, and as it turns out, these blocks have special properties that make them try to fall directly downward so that they lose their forward momentum. Unacceptable. Maybe a large rock or a spike ball. Well, those are certainly more like Terrence, but unfortunately I can't launch them with springs. With enough bombs, anything is possible though, though aiming this thing is still a pain. Time for the speedster, Chuck. This one seems super obvious, right? Just stick a rocket on it and... Well, that's not the desired result. The stabilizer does make the trajectory a bit better, but ultimately triggering the speed up mid-air just doesn't work as well in Tears of the Kingdom versus actual Angry Birds. Boomerang Bird, how? Naturally, all we gotta do is put a boomerang on him and launch. Well, that was a lie. These boomerangs don't make objects return, and Koroks can't be fused onto your weapons. But thanks to this Reddit post, I realized there was another method. By ultra-hand fusing a Korok to a boomerang, we can simply use recall to get it to follow the throne path in reverse. It honestly isn't even that bad, and I managed to take a construct down with our version of HAL. Though it is a little unfaithful to Angry Birds since we don't use a launcher, but this was the best I could do. While not in the base games, he shows in a number of side games, so I thought I'd include the Ice Bird. He freezes nearby blocks, and we can reproduce this effect by stacking ice jellies on a Korok. Ice is always a good way to enter an enemy encounter. Stella, how in the heck are we gonna invent helium bubbles that raise stuff off the ground? Well, I'm not sure about the bubbles part, but octobloons certainly work for lifting stuff. That said, we can't exactly just fuse them onto our Korok as they'll inflate. As it turns out, Zonite Balloons can hold them, but we can't really drop them out of it. Cooking Pots are another option, and it actually does give us a way to launch them and pick up... Huh. Well, that should've worked. Turns out I couldn't get Octoblooms to trigger if they'd stop moving after Link dropped them. That's fine. We'll just add Link to the bird and drop it off the wing and... That didn't work either, and I don't have an explanation for it. Technically, time bombs would give us a bubble and move things, but even with a launch, it feels a bit untrue to Stella. So I'm curious if anyone can find a good way to recreate this one. Regardless, let's do one more. While he might not launch like the other birds, Mr. Mighty Eagle makes an appearance in the games and felt fitting as the last one to tackle. Now, I don't really believe we can make a Korok that flies across the screen making the enemies immediately vanish, but a flying machine of death seems fitting enough. The Korok's even in the front seat to make sure he sees every foe he takes down. With our feathered crew assembled, the Koroks have finally been given a chance to shine. 
Thanks for watching! If you want to see another bird represented or recreated that I missed, feel free to drop it in the comments below along with any other ideas of how to recreate these better. Or if you want some other Tears of the Kingdom content, check out my No Abilities runs. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box video.